Hey, hey, all you VIP teachers, Justin here talking about consonant blends. A consonant blend is just as it sounds. You take two consonants, like s and k, and you put them together. Notice there are two sounds, and there are two letters. This is important to understand in consonant blends. We're talking about two letters and two sounds. This contrasts with digraphs, which is, we'll talk about really quickly. Digraphs is two different letters, also called graphemes, but when you put them together, it doesn't make two different sounds put together. It's two letters, but there's only one sound that comes from it. In this case, the sh sound. So you can see the S and the H together don't make a s sound, it's a sh. So that's what a digraph is. There's two letters, but there's just one sound. What that means is you need to encourage your student to see them as a unit that works together, very much like a sight word. We talk about sight words because you have to be able to look at the word and just memorize what it is. You take a picture, take a mental picture of that of those two letters together. That sh makes sh, ph makes f, wh makes w. So you have to help them understand when I see these two letters, it makes one sound. And so the best way to do that is through repetition of real examples with visuals. We're all much more apt to learn when it's multimedia, right? So uh, you draw a whale, for example, and then there's a reason for them to actually want to use the language. In this case, we have the WH. Encourage them to see that, again, working as a unit. You might circle it or square it off like this, but help them understand that there's a link between those two letters, and then it just makes that one sound. Now, the key here is to use real examples. Ideally, you'll use relevant examples, right? So if the kid likes cars, you might use uh, a wheel, right? If they like animals, you might use the whale. If they like cooking, like me, for example, I might prefer whisk, white, wheel, whisk, whale. The key here is to find real examples and relevant examples. That's the key, because at the end of the day, what's gonna make this most effective is that it's fun, that it's relevant, that something that your student can identify with. So, that was digraphs. Let's come back to consonant blends, which is the question here in point, and so, I want to kind of turn the question on its head. The question initially was, how do you teach consonant blends? But in reality, consonant blends is not necessarily something that you want to teach, but something that you use to make things easier. In this example of cat, for example, we're not teaching them to blend cat so that they can blend, we're helping them to actually pronounce the word cat properly. Now, consonant blends are just like any blend. So, you know how to blend. You can imagine k at cat, you blend a word, s at sat, you blend the all the different sounds together, and you might use a speed method, like s at, s at, s at, s at, s at, you start speeding those three sounds up, or you might use the crash method, right, where you group together at, and you do s at, okay? So we're gonna just really quickly review blending in general, and then we'll come back to consonants, okay? But I want to keep in mind that consonant blends is just like any other blending, okay? Now the first rule of blending is you want to make sure that it's fun. So let's just cover a few tips on making sure that your blending activities are fun. The three levers of engagement for having fun, MVP, movement, voices, and props. If you've been to my workshops, you've probably heard this ad nauseum, but it's so true, movement, voices, and props. These are some of the big levers of engagement. Make sure that you're using all three of them. So when it comes to blending, you can use the finger blending activity. So imagine s, a, t, sat. You use your fingers. Uh, the hand crunching activity, I'm sure you've all seen this before. S, at, sat. So you crash the two together. And finally, especially with younger students, it's great to get your body involved. So you can tap once on your shoulder, once on your elbow, once on your wrist, s, a, t, and then you can kind of slide your hand down at one time, sat. And you can speed this up if you want, it's up to you, but remember to get the student moving when you're working with blends, whether you're blending individual sounds, or maybe you'll, you'll use the crash method where you divide the word in two and then do them in chunks, s, at, sat. Get them moving. Let's now come back to uh, consonant blends, right? Because I know what you're thinking now. Well, okay, this is blending, I got that, but uh, that's not a consonant blend. That's a blend of two consonants and a vowel. It's like a word blend. Well, remember from earlier, 
it's important that you aren't scared of consonant blends because you already know how to blend words. Now you're just going to put another consonant in there. The important thing to remember is that when you see a blend, a consonant blend, that you remember to separate the two individually so that the student can really understand what's going on. Just like when you blend words, you blend consonants the same way. You're going to sound out each individual sound. S -k -at. S -k -at. S -k -at. And then later on, you can always group things out. So, for example, and this is especially important, like in the word skirt. Look, skirt. That's five different sounds, right? That's a little bit overwhelming. Like, hmm, maybe there's just too much going on here. That's hard to remember. It's a lot going on at once. So, what do you do? You cut the word in half, right? And by breaking it into pieces, the most logical place to split it is, you probably guessed it, right there, having those uh, two consonants at the beginning. So, this is the idea, the logic of these consonant blends is that they're here to help you, not necessarily something you need to teach them in isolation. So, in the word skirt, for example, let's assume that we were just talking about a skirt, they're having difficulty pronouncing it, you'll use those consonant blends to write that out and then get them to move so that it's fun. Now, let's go to voices. If there were ever a time to use your voice, now is the time on any type of pronunciation related activity, you have to use your voice, okay? You can do all sorts of fun voices and, and imitations, but a really great way to do this is to chant. And chanting is really effective at getting through lots of material really quickly. Skirt, skirt, fur, og, frog, pull, a, play, grr, o, oh, grow. And just by having fun with your voice, it'll already make it fun, but also you get through a lot at once. And if there's an issue on any one of those words, then you would go ahead and take a look at that in isolation. If they had problems with skirt, then you would write that out and then work with that a little bit more closely, okay? So movements, voices, and then of course, don't ditch your props. Things like blocks are terrific. Things uh, like when you can just simply writing something out on a whiteboard or paper or grabbing your flashcards or your magnet letters. All of these really serve just to break, that up, break it up and make a multimedia experience. That's really the idea of the MVP strategy is that you're using lots of different mediums uh, because we all know that learning is best when it's multimodal. One of my favorite activities to do uh, using props is just using my whiteboard and I'll draw the animal first. Kids love to watch you draw. So get good at drawing a few uh, really common animals. And so then once you draw the frog, now you have a reason to say the word frog, right? Fur, og. Notice how doing that uh, blend actually helps you help, helps you help them express themselves. So the first rule is keep it fun. Rule number two is to use a multimedia approach, okay? And then finally, rule number three, and we've been uh, really on this the whole time over and over again is that you want to always maintain natural authentic examples Okay, maintain natural context uh, It's tempting on a slide. That's just about consonant blends to make it about consonant blends But I'd encourage you to work more with stories and activities that will have a particular word of interest and then you pull that out if the student makes a mistake. So you're reading about a girl and their skirt. So you pull that aside and then you use the consonant blends to help them pronounce, to correct. So don't teach the consonant blends. Use the consonant blends in your favor. And that's the moral of the story today is that you shouldn't feel pressured to teach the consonant blends. They're there to help you. If you enjoyed, uh, then give me a like, give me a thumbs up, leave any comments if you have any questions. Uh, and thank you for watching. Until next time, happy teaching.